going on diamonds and gents this is miss trade that jim and you are watching jim spot tv This is about to be a Ayala Fix My Life recap. Um, the episode that I'll be recapping is the one that aired today, which is June 21st, uh, 2014. And we're going to get on into it. Uh, Ayala was calling it the triangle. And so we're going to talk about it. So basically, it's, um, you know, um, the typical family kind of feud thing where the mother-in-law and the wife are kind of feuding and now you know it's brought the her son her four-year-old son into it her grant which will be the excuse me the mother-in-law's grandson and it would be you know her son Keisha the wife's son bringing them into it okay and we're going to talk about how basically Ayala went in thinking that the, the feud was really between the women. And what she realized as she was talking to Danye is that Danye had issues with his mother from when his mother abandoned him for um, 12 years after at 12 years old for 12 years uh, doing drugs. And so basically, um, Ayala sits down with his mother first because Ayala likes to deal with the elders first because, you know, and that's the thing, you know, the Bible even says, let your older women train your young women. It's a reason to why, um, every woman, I don't care. I, even I had a mentor, um, every woman should sit under even if it's your mother, an older woman, um, that'll, that you can glean from, that you can learn some things from. Um, I watched my grandmother. I, wa I listened. My grandmother had heart-to-hearts with me. Um, and I would listen to how she would say things and how her mannerism was. Like I tell people, it wasn't a lot of what was said to me um, as I was growing up. It was a lot to do with me watching. I watched a lot. My mentor, when I was in ministry and things like that, uh, I just watched her. And, it, and it, she said, she, oh, she, she, would, she would get you in order. But it was, I watched her. I watched how she handled things. I watched how she handled people. Um, and it, I learned a lot. I was like 20 and she was 47 at the time. You understand what I'm saying? So I learned a lot from that woman. And so I believe that every diamond in the rough needs that diamond that can cut them up, get them together so that they can be ready. And I tell people all the time, you need that in your life. Even sometimes peer level. You need that one person that can keep it 100, strictly 100 and real with you or whatever and tell you about you. You know, like, and a lot of people don't want to hear that. And it's the reason to why I'm bringing it up. I felt like with Keisha, she didn't want to hear the hard things from Miss Ayala. But we're going to get to that. And so, um, she sat down with his mother. And to let his mother know, like, you never come out of bag like that on anybody. Especially when you want something. You want a relationship with your grandchild. And everybody is blaming you for the issues and the problems and the situations that are taking place within this relationship you need to always be the one on point i like that miss ayala dealt with her like that iyala dealt with her like that i like that she um went in and let her know like no you be the one to get it together you be the one to repair the relationship even though you think it's not your fault you be the one to repair the relationship and she also asked her, you know, has she dealt with the fact that she was on drugs? Have you dealt with that? And I like the fact that she kept it one. Like, yeah, I dealt with that. I dealt with those issues that I had. 
when Miss Miss Iyala sat down with Donye, we found out that Donye hadn't really dealt with the fact that he was abandoned. He masked it with other things, and then he had a strong woman that basically, if she don't want to be bothered, she's not going to be bothered. So that kept him from having to deal with his issues. And in turn, the issues that he had with his mother kind of started having those issues with his children, his daughters, his adult daughters. He began to have issues with them just like he was having with mama because he didn't want to be around mama because mama left him. And it kind of, he kind of started to see like how that was affecting his relationship with the girls, his girls, his daughters. And his own mother. Um, so Ayala was letting him know like, you know what? The issue is not Keisha and your mama. The issue is you. You got a woman that is strong enough to say, I don't want to be bothered. Even though that's not the way to handle everything. But I just don't want to be bothered. And because you got a woman that will do your dirty work for you, you don't have to deal with the fact of telling your mother how you feel about those 12 years she left you. And in 12 years of your life that was critical, you were becoming an adult male. And you had to learn how to be that from somebody else other than your maternal, your mom, you know. And so he kind of was like, yeah, he kind of get it. So we get to him supposed to go do some work, you know, and spend the night at his mother's house. He told Ayala he had some personal business to take care of, but he lied basically because he didn't have any personal business to take up, care of. It was actually he had to work. Honestly, I don't believe that. That's just me personally. I'm with Ayala. I believe he was lying. Yes. And if you feel I'm assassinating your character, it is what it is. I believe that you wasn't you were not ready to deal with your mom and you're still not willing to deal with those issues you would rather just okay let the past be the past but those past things are creeping up into your adult life and especially with your relationship with your adult girls that that's your seed and you need to have that hard conversation you need to sit down and let mama know, listen, when you left me, I felt like X, Y, and Z. I think that he said it on surface, but he really didn't say it. You get what I'm saying? Like, he really didn't say it like he meant it, meant it. It was like, yeah, you know, you broke me. And she was like, okay, but what does that mean? Like, Ayala was trying to make him speak. She got a little bit out of him. But he didn't go back, and so he like he promised Ayala he would go back, deal with his business, and go back. That boy went home to his wife and laid in bed with his wife. Let me just keep it strictly one hundred, okay? That what happened, and that's okay. But say that, tell Ayala. I think personally, Mr. Donye, you should just tell Ayala like, listen, I'm gonna go to work, but I'm going home. You want me to do something that I'm not willing to do right now. I'm not willing to tell to my mother about what she did to me, how she affected me. I'm not willing to talk about that. And I feel like that would have been your truth, whether Ayala agree, Miss Iyala agree with it or not. I keep saying Ayala, Iyala agree with it or not. That's her business. But that's that at that point is your truth. That's how you felt about that. So. Anyway, so Iyala wanted him to see like how his not keeping his word and his commitment to his girls far as certain issues. Like he's a good father, but you not you not there at the most critical points and we need you to see this. And so Yana is letting the girls tell him. He like, Y'all know about this doesn't make my character, da da da. And so the girls naturally feeling like they couldn't state how they truth or how they felt he literally backed them into a corner to back them out of it like you don't want to feel that you know they begin to cry like i don't want to feel like that me personally i'm totally different <laughs> my my mother and my father 
when I was 10 years old, got a divorce. My father, my father got married to another woman while he was still married to my mom. And he got one of those, I'm going to put it in the newspaper. And knowing my mother is in Chicago and you didn't move your till to Alabama, back to Alabama, okay? And you done filed, you, you, you get what I'm saying, one of those type of divorces. And so basically my mother didn't even find out they were divorced until like literally three months afterwards because they had to send her the paperwork and let her know you're officially, you know, no, no longer married to X, Y, and Z. And so when my father divorced my mom, he divorced his girls. It was like no ties to, you know. So my father had a prostate cancer type scare thing when I was like 18 years old. And he basically, no, I was... I was 17 because I was I had I was graduating. Um, I was 17, about to turn 18. And basically, what he did was, and I like to offer my truths in here because the reason why I offer my truths when I'm talking about uh, Miss Iyala's show is because when I give my opinion about something, I don't want you guys to think, oh, she just got it all. No, I ain't got it all together. I done been through some things. So, okay. Okay, let's put that together. So he came back because basically he wanted to make things right with my mom because he was still in love with my mom. And she knew it, but she refused to be with a man that couldn't take care of his girls, like wouldn't take care of. Because he, oh, he kept a job. My father was never jobless, kept a job. Even when he smoked drugs to his kneecaps fell off. He kept a job, okay? Everywhere, he kept a job. He was 16 years clean when he came back into our lives. And I was, like I said, I was about to be grown. I had literally packed my stuff. I was about to be living. I lived on my own. I was living on my own, in my own place. You understand? My sister was like 14. Yeah, she was like 14. And he wanted to come to my graduation. And let me just go ahead and say I felt a certain kind of way about that. But I, my mom had a talk with me. And she was like, you know what, I know he wasn't there at the critical years of your life, but you have to forgive him. So I did. He sent for, he sent for me to come to Alabama. Okay? I get to Alabama and he tells me, I wrote him a letter when I was like 12 years old. And he tells me he got it. Never wrote back. Never phone, never picked up the phone to call, nothing. I was like, okay, so why didn't you call? Well, you know, you guys knew my uh, my father's number. Y'all could have called me. You knew I was here. I was 12 years old. Are you serious? Is that your excuse today? That's the excuse we're going to use. So he walked out the, out the kitchen. Left the, out the house. I'm in Alabama in, in his house now. Talking, confronting him and asking him like, Bruh, what's up? My father left out. I sat at that table and I waited for him to come back. I was, I was going to make him face me. You're not going to blame my mama and you're not going to blame a 12-year-old girl. You should have did your work. You should have picked up that phone and you should have called me. I wrote you a letter. I took the time out of my little 12-year-old day and wrote my daddy a letter. And you telling me you got my letter and you couldn't contact me back? Why? Eventually, he stopped making excuses because I made him stop making those excuses. And he apologized. But... To this day, I don't, you know, I had a relationship with him for a while and then he changed his number and I asked him to give me away at my wedding and that was the last time, two years after that, I talked to my father and I haven't talked to him since. He changed his number and I never got his new phone number and that's the reality. Um, and so I said all that to say, never ever, I don't care if it is your daddy. Never, ever, ever abandon your truth because of somebody else or you think you're going to hurt someone else. 
I would never want to hurt you, but this is my truth. You left me. You abandoned me. You hurt me. I think that Donye couldn't sit. And when he finally decided to sit there and listen to his girls, I think that's when he got the breakthrough and realized what Miss Ayana was saying. Iyana was saying about his mother and his relationship and how he needs to fix that. And so I'm hopeful for the family. I think that he really will be able to fix the relationship between him and his mom. You know, because he really saw some things. With Miss Keisha, when she was dealing with Miss Keisha and talking to Miss Keisha, she was too busy worried about a phone conversation that took place in the voicemail. Ms. Ayala said, you didn't hear, Iyala said, you didn't hear anything I said. I told you she was wrong. I told you I think she needs to apologize. But I'm telling you, you need to forgive her once she apologized. And let it go. You know what I'm saying? I'm not telling you to take the disrespect. What I'm telling you is to take her apology. I think that, and then she walked off as Miss Iyala was talking. So, you, here you go. You get what I mean? You got a woman that's 40 that can't deal with confrontation. Head face face confrontation. That's an issue. And I'm glad that she did calm herself down, come back, and was willing to really listen. Um, and that relationship with um mama looks like it can be really be, you know, worked out. But I'm gonna say this when it comes to mother in laws, cause bad. Let me just go ahead and say, my other law in the beginning -wee, was a piece of work, honey. But I'm the kind of person where, listen, you respect me, I respect you. That's it. It is what it is. We don't have to have a relationship if you don't want a relationship. That's quite all right with me. But I'm willing to have a relationship with you, the woman, not my not my husband's mama. No, no, no. I'm willing to have a relationship with you, the woman. I'm so glad Miss Yala said that to her. Because in my mind, I always like to have a relationship with people. Not because that's your mom. No. And before me and my husband got married, when me and my husband was friends, me and his mother was, you know, cool. That's why I was like kind of baffled. Like when the man proposed to me, things changed. You know, you started not liking me. Like... And then, finally, when I was talking, because I wanted to know. See, I'm the kind of person, like I said, I like to deal with myself, and I like people to, and I like people to deal with things, and deal, and I like to deal with things as well. And sometimes it takes me a while, but I sit and I think about it, and I'm like, you know what, let me contact them and let them know, you know what, you were right. I do have an issue with X, Y, and Z. Now, you've seen that in me. Let me ask you this. You know, and I'm like that. That's just how I am. So, when I was sitting down with my husband's mom, and I just, you know, asked her, like, you know what? When me and my husband, when me, my husband was friends, you and I were cool. You know, we were talking to car for hours, you know, when she would drop me off or something. I'm like, we were cool. We talked everything, you know. She was like, well, I felt like you was taking my son from me. You was stealing my son. Now, mind you, my husband and my husband's mom and him are kind of like, they have a close relationship now, but then it was not as close. And so that's why that baffled me to hear her say that. And I asked her what she meant, you know, and I told my husband. My husband was shocked that she said that, you know. And so just to make a long story short, I got to know her her how she felt as a woman about another woman coming into her space her circle you understand what i'm saying so it's important people to do the work that's all i'm saying i like that saying do the work it's important to do the work no matter what you may be like that woman ain't gonna ever like me but you never know you know get to know that woman get to know her as a woman get to know her story and i got to talking and i actually helped my husband heal about a lot of things that were in his relationship with his mom by telling him our relationship. You get what I'm saying? So now I'll be like, hey, Mama Kathy, you know, we cool like that now. Because I talk to her and I let her and I listen to her and I listen to how she feels about things. But this Ayala Fix My Life, like I said, I absolutely loved it. I have not um, 
did any shows this week reviews but this one and I'm just getting bored with the foolishness on TV. That's just the reality. LA Hair may get a review the next one because that one looks like it's about to pick up. But that was it. Diamonds, you are the toughest material on the earth, ladies. And there's none like you, gents. You know, my boys, when you watch this channel. And to all my darlings, appreciate you, appreciate you, babies. Mwah.